Hi, I'm your host, Brian Madman McNally. And I'm Aaron Darkhazer Banzon. And this is our spoiler uh, discussion of Fun Home. Yeah, what is a spoiler? Yeah, no, that's the question. So this is probably going to be one of the shorter <laughs> ones. So, yeah. uh, I was just thinking, like, we th- we talked about some of the stuff that happened in the latter part of the book. Mm-hmm. Uh, like how uh, the, the more interesting story that came to my mind from the book was how her dad tried taking her to a strip club. <laughs> So she, I believe she mentioned then later that uh, she she later found out that in the back there was also a male strip club. Yeah. And that's kind of a spoiler, but whatever. And Yeah, yeah spoiler cast, man. Yeah, I don't know. Let's see, what else is worth, worth talking about? Anything that you wanted to talk about? What about uh, how she thinks that her dad committed suicide when he died? Oh, yeah. We really didn't get too much into that, which I guess, yeah, that's, that's, that's a spoiler. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So it. So yeah, she admits that like it, it might not have been a suicide, and there's a lot of things that are kind of mm. unclear, like whether he really was. She she even says towards the end of the book that uh, she keeps referring to him as gay when he might have been bisexual, but that that was yeah. kind of her way of relating to him and kind of mm. possessing him. Yeah, uh, in her own yeah, in her own unique way. Yeah, that was actually kind of funny too. I just keep on remembering this when uh, when she told her parents that. She was lesbian. Her mom was like, what? What is this? All shocked. And then her dad was like, oh, it's okay. It's okay for you to experiment. Go experiment. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's another good thing to talk about. It's just, uh, oh, well, why don't we go back to the suicide thing? Yeah. So the way her her uh, dad died, and keep in mind that this is all, uh, even though it is her, her account, none of this is fiction. This is all as it happened. As it happened was that her father was working on a, on a house and while he was crossing the street to throw away some uh, hay or leaves or whatever it was uh, he was hit by a truck and according to the truck driver uh, he jumped backwards huh so yeah. it kind of makes you think it was a suicide yeah yeah and so that's that was her conclusion is that it was a suicide and that it makes sense uh, given that at the time her uh, her dad and her mom were about to divorce yeah but yeah no so let's go back to the other thing too about the letter <laughs> <laughs> yeah the you know the dad was like oh it's okay for you to experiment because i feel like that the dad was like yeah i've gone through that too so all right yeah and he also talks about how like oh your generation is different and stronger than ours and, yeah and about this whole thing about being brave mm-hmm. uh, which is also interesting in its in its own way as well um just in that like it, it's one of those things too it's like it, it can, I guess maybe it's because uh, we're living in the year of 2018, but, you know, how do you read that letter and not understand that what he was talking about, right? Yeah. Uh, as they say, hindsight is 2020, but at the same time, see, I could kind of get where maybe at the time she didn't understand what he was talking about. But Yeah. Yeah, it's it's and this kind of goes back to it being a dark comedy about how the signs were there uh, very blatantly mm-hmm. and she, yeah, she just, didn't get it. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to think what else could talk about here yeah this like like we said this is one of the harder ones to do a spoiler discussion on mm-hmm. uh since the story isn't told very linearly yeah it's, it's all over the place and unfortunately at this time as well we do not having very much uh, listener mail coming in yeah which so. is to say we don't have any listener mail coming in <laughs> yeah we're just winging it at this point so i think anyways i, I actually never checked what <laughs> you better not edit this out <laughs> Uh, let me check. I'm going to stop the recording right here. Yep, it is just as I expected. There are no new mails. Yeah, I can't send mail to him so, because I'm the co-host. So. Yeah. So in all fairness to me, uh, I get a notification on my phone every time I get a new email. So. Yeah, that's iPhone. Yeah, so I was pretty... That's why I was so sure that I didn't have to check. <laughs> okay, but later on, you know, a few more. Hopefully we'll get some, you know, like shout out to you guys that are listening to this. Yeah. All two of you? Two. Nah. As like, there's going to be more more people will just, like, you know, go through our backlogs. Yeah. I'm in the two currently. Anyways, uh, back to Fun Home. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, so... How about the name Fun Home? The na- Oh, the name Fun Home, where that comes from. Yeah. Oh, yeah, how that came from, the, about how uh, growing up, they would help out at their family's... Uh, Funeral home. Yeah, which... Uh, it's too, oh that that does bring up another good part though 
was the the part with the dead body and the cavity in it. Oh yeah, that one. Yeah. How do you feel about that scene? I kind of don't want to talk about it. <laughs> you can talk about it if you want. I'll just I'll just listen and like nod. Yeah. Uh. Yeah. That one was was pretty was pretty interesting in a disturbing kind of way because it's like just of how 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 it showed that how as someone who uh had worked uh with dead bodies her dad had kind of become uh he just become so accustomed to it yeah he's just like uh desensitized yeah and that he'd almost uh it's almost it's kind of unclear whether he just assumed that she would also have a sense of being desensitized to Mm -hmm. it as well or if he was testing her or maybe he just needed the scissors yeah yeah some 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 dad just expose your kids to dead bodies that he's just you know yeah yeah no um god if i saw something like that i'd probably be horrified yeah it does it does show the dark humor of this uh book yeah because then it, the funny thing too at least is the way she illustrates it is she's walking out she just has her that the way she draws those mundane board faces again <laughs> I kind of can't get over the board faces. I don't know. I'm sorry. But, no, it's a pretty good art, so. But this is a spoiler cast. Yeah. Oh, that reminds me, too, though, uh, in regards to the art of uh, yet another part. Like, really, that, that's all we can really do is pick a, uh, is pick apart, like, specific scenes. Yeah. At this point, unfortunately. Um, but there is kind of a meta moment in there where she talks about why she kind of talks about why the book is not in color really yeah if you recall because she talked about how um she had the coloring book of uh wind in the willows oh yeah and then like her dad was like why are you coloring it like that i'll, I'll color for you yeah and she kind of <laughs> describes how like shortly thereafter she abandoned color with her illustrations oh, wow the dad just ruined everything huh yeah which is yeah, which is, uh, you know, just kind of funny because then that makes you realize, oh, maybe this is why this book has no color to it. <laughs> yeah, she's just scarred for life, like, after that one moment and other moments throughout her life. Like, oh, the dad's perfectionist. Fine, whatever. Yeah, and dad's still kind of haunting her in that sense, but... Yeah, now, um, some other other good scenes to talk about. We did go briefly into that sex scene as well, which is not really even a sex scene. Yeah. Uh, I, did, I did like the... Uh, a thing though where they were breaking down uh their favorite children's books and they're like god christopher robin is such a fascist i know like just like yeah it really does show you like all the children's stuff we uh had like you know like all the books uh like those cartoons and you know old folk songs and all that like, yeah cause yeah the, you yeah, don't really other... think about it when you're a kid yeah because the other one they brought up was uh she or that she brought up was uh james and the giant peach and they're reading that oh, about man. going into the peach oh um, I did not need to actually think about that, so thanks a lot. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never be able to look at James and the Giant Peach the same way again. I'm just done with all childhood stuff. I'm just going to like continue to watch anime. That's all. <laughs> yeah, no. Um... But yeah, no, th- I can't believe that that particular thing ever caused a controversy for anyone. Though. It's, like, it's not even really a sex scene. It's Yeah. It's like... That guy who was in that new story ever listens to this, get over it. <laughs> yeah, why the frick not? Like, yeah. There, there's other comics that you could, you know, like, be mad about. I'm, j- We're just saying. Yeah. Yeah, I would be mad about them too, actually, so. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, whole thing with the, uh, the, the babysitters. And if you notice, too, any time that she drew a photograph, she did it more realistically. Huh. I did not notice that. Yeah, like it's more, it's a lot more sketched out and done uh, closer. Yeah, why do you think that is? I, th- I think she was trying, I think it, in, a, in a way I, it was kind of trying to capture the memory of the photo rather than her kind of. Uh, oh, like kind of like in her own mind? Yeah, rather than her, on? yeah, as opposed to her interpretation of mm. as things happened. Yeah, okay. Now, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, because you know, there's that whole thing about how, uh, have you ever heard about how. Like, we remember things in the third person, even though we live life in the first person. I, never, I was never told that. Really? You've never heard this before? No. It's that, like, when people envision, 
when people envision things, they envision things in uh, in their memories and being the third uh, and being in the third person, and people dream about things happening to them in the third person. Okay, yeah, I get that dream part. Yeah, some crazy stuff happens in my dream. So, yeah, and so in a sense, though, I think that's that's why those photos are drawn so realistically is because she those photos actually exist, whereas. Mm-hmm. Although everything she's writing about happened uh, happen in some capacity, uh, it's still her interpretation of how things happen, where things would have been placed. Yep. That's pretty interesting psychology uh, lesson from the madman over here. So Yeah. Oh, because there's also two. There, there's one part that she would have had to have interpreted. Because she talked about how uh, she found out years later that her best friend's parents had propositioned her own parents uh, mm-hmm. to have a um, yeah. to have an orgy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then and then uh, <laughs> the see the illustration under it is of her mom walking out of the room, kind of shocked, and her dad <laughs> just kind of saying, "Oh, she just gets shy." Yeah, I remember. I so remember that moment. Yeah. So obviously <laughs> that that would have to be uh, obviously that would have to have been her interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, mem- human memory is pretty unreliable. Yeah, it is. So, like, you know, like, it, I feel like a lot of this stuff that she talks about in the book, like, it might have been just misunderstandings. You know, it's her interpretation of it, and it's her memory, so. Yeah, there's, it's also too interesting the way, uh, as well, that she will draw, like, if you, there are a lot of little background details in some of the, in some of the illustrations as well. Like, I yeah. remember uh, in one where, I believe it took place at some kind of uh, um, gay march rally. I just noticed that like one of the the women was wearing a t shirt that said this. Uh, she looked pregnant, visibly pregnant, and her uh, t shirt said something about how this uh, baby came from a baster or something like that. <laughs> Talk about specific in those photos. <laughs> yeah, I know. I just yeah, just like I won't say it's prob- possible. Uh, yeah. No one like that was there, but mm-hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. That's just her way of drawing things. Yeah, but yeah. So if you if you go back and look at the the pictures of that, you can t- very visibly tell that there there's a lot more detail than those. Mm. Yeah. Also, too, just the way that she she draws parallels to her dad. Sometimes you wonder if she's reaching too much or if uh, if she's right. Because yeah, there's that that one part where she talks about her uh, her dad looking comfortable in some kind of uh, he, when he was taking a photo for some kind of college hazing where he had to dress up as a woman. <laughs> But then again, uh, you know, at least according to her later on uh, in the book, she also does mention that at one point she talks about how growing up she wanted to be a boy and her dad said something about, oh, really? Growing up, I wanted to be a girl. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, another uh, relatable thing between the two of them. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's see. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, as I've mentioned before, future uh, spoiler discussions will go a lot more smoothly than this one. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Allison. Thanks a lot. Yeah, there's a part of me that honestly was considering, and they were like, do we really need to do a spoiler discussion yeah. for this one? But then I I thought maybe by chance there'll be someone out there listening. Yeah, you know, like, yeah, you know the struggle of this, because if you read the book, yeah, it's like pretty hard. So Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm still curious about how they turn it into a musical. Yeah, me too. Maybe one day we'll just watch the musical. Yeah, I did, I did actually, I did listen to the, uh, to the first song in the musical once. And how did it compare to the book? Oh, well, um, it was her, it, I think it was like two or three minutes of that opening scene with uh, her asking her dad if they could do the airplane game. Really? Yeah. They, they just made that into a song? <laughs> yeah. And especially considering that that particular part is only a few panels. Oh, oh man. I bet they just skip a lot of stuff. I mean, I'm sure they have to. I, they, yeah. I'm sure they had to do a complete rearrangement of the story. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, because oof, it's all over the place. Also, Imagine. I wonder how they would do the... Because uh, she talks about going to her mom's plays and how her mom uh, did a yeah. lot of plays. So mm-hmm. I wonder how, if, if they uh, represented a play within a play. <laughs> that would be so funny. That's like some fourth dimensional stuff or something like yeah. that. Oh, that did remind me of another scene, though, where she's talking about uh, in the play. I can't remember what play it was, but uh, about how she was quoting her favorite lines from from the play, like about how oh, I always uh, bring my uh, or I always bring my diary when I travel, so I have mm. something interesting to read. <laughs> yeah, I just yeah, I just remember being 
you know, teenage or two. And like every time I heard some kind of new great line, I had to keep co- find some way to quote it and incorporate it into my life. Well, I never did that. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, that's actually really interesting. You know, like reading like your diary, like something interesting to read while you're going somewhere. That's actually pretty insightful. You know, like you, you know, you learn something through life. And obviously Allison has learned a lot through her life. So that's why she wrote this autobiography comic. Yeah. So join us back next week for our review of Exit Stage Left, The Snag of Us Chronicles. And on November 4th, we are doing our first Force of the Month with Lando. Keep up with the podcast. Look for us on YouTube or go to soundcloud.com forward slash deadendcomics. To keep up with Dead End Comics, you could also check us out on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash deadendcomicbooks. Or on Twitter at Dead End CVC. And to contact us, email us at Dead End Comic Books Club at gmail.com. All links in the description.